Hi everyone, it's Karen from Karen's Quilts, Crows and Cardinals blog and Redbird Quilt Co. Back for the next installment of our 2016 Redbird Quilt Co. Free Motion Quilt Along. Now in the last session we, we stitched uh, the free motion quilting swirls with a little bit of loop-de-loops in the middle of Lou. After we stitched around the perimeter of Lou, um, we came inside with our uh, 2600 Dove color Orofil 50 weight thread and we stitched some really simple swirls and some loops all around Lou, making sure that we um, stitch around his um, ears, around his legs and the little stripes on his legs. And I think we did a pretty good job. The, the whole intent was to not do too much dense quilting so that we knock lose texture down and we actually did a pretty good job at that so I think he's looking pretty good. Um, what we're going to do in this installment is at least we're going to go ahead and stitch pebbles around the little bee that's beside Lou and we're going to stitch around this to give this whole area some movement. So let's go ahead and do that and then we may jump over and do the clouds depending on how we're doing for time. But So in order to get started doing this, and by the way in my last video um, you could hear that my needle was not very happy. It kept popping on the fabric, which meant to me that even though it was a new needle, it may have had some sort of a burr or some sort of something wrong with it. So I went ahead while we were gone on break and I changed my needle out and I put a brand new um, 7511 needle in, which works perfectly fine with the RFL 50 weight in the top and the bobbin. Now, when we're stitching the B, I would recommend... Um, actually making my way up to the bee from um, this trailer line. It's a really beautiful trailer line of, of, of dots that we're decided to stitch pebbles around. And then we're going to actually outline the bee and then kind of go around and put a few echoes around here. So we're going to be learning pebbles and then some um, more outline stitching and then echoes. So that's, those are really, really great motifs to have under your belt. So let's get started with that. Typical uh, way to start, um, and I'm going to just push my panel in to the right. Now, if you don't have a lot of room there, you can certainly switch things around, but then you're going to have the quilt top in your lap. So what I would do, I don't necessarily roll my um, fabric to the right-hand side. I push it over. There's still some flexibility there that I can actually move this with my hand without rolling this into a ball, which actually might become even more stiff. Now, everybody does that differently, but this is what works with me. Sometimes I need to roll, but right now there's a lot of flexibility in this panel, so there's really no need to roll this up and potentially cause yourself another problem. So let's get started. I'm going to um, do like I always do. I'm going to hold on to my top thread and uh, put my needle down and up once, down and up while I'm holding on to the top thread. And then if you pull on that top thread, you'll see your bobbin thread pop up um, to the top of your fabric. And then you, if you just draw that through, then both your bobbin and your top thread are now laying on on your quilt top. Now what that does is it helps um, elim eliminate the worry that you're going to get a bird's nest uh, where your your bobbin thread gets caught in the background and gets stitched down a few times. Um, it, it, it's just easier to know where it is and that it's up here and tucked away so you don't have to worry about bird's nests underneath and if you're going to bury your threads, which we aren't in this session, you know that both of your threads are right here and can easily be buried when you're done quilting. So that's the advantage of um, pulling that bobbin thread to the top. Alright, so I've pulled the bobbin thread to the top. I'm going to um, always start if you have this feature on your machine put your needle in the down position and um, I'm just going to take a, a stitch or two in place to kind of lock those threads and then I'm going to um, go ahead and trim these out of the way and again I'll come back later and trim them flush but now I just wanted to get them out of the way of our of our stitching path okay so I hope that you can see that there's a lot of little dots like a trailer line that lead up to the B. What we're going to do is pick a few. We don't have to put pebbles around each and every one of them, but pick, do what feels comfortable for you. If you want to get really tiny with your pebbles, then do it around each one. But if you don't, um, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. So as we talked about 
in our whiteboard session, I love to do a complete circle, go all the way around in a circle when um, when I'm when I'm doing pebbles. Um, some people you can do a half of a pebble, half all the way up, and then half on the way back. But personally, I find that my pebbles get kind of flat, or uh, they're not rounded when I do it that way. So. For me, I like to do a complete circle, backtrack to position yourself on that pebble where you want to start your next pebble. So that's what I'm going to do. I just finished a pebble. I'm going to backtrack and then pick up my next pebble, finish it, and then keep going all the way around till to, to I'm in a position where I can start my next pebble. I'm going to do another pebble. I'm going to make this one a little smaller, all the way around and position myself to the next one. And I'm going to keep doing that pattern all the way through this lovely little line of pebble, of uh, dots that are showing the, um, the flying path of the bee. Now it doesn't matter if your pebbles are big or small. Do what feels comfortable for you. I've got my left hand out of the way of the camera, but I'm actually using two hands to control what I'm doing, just so you know you can't see that from your angle. But I noticed that before my left hand um, was in the way quite a bit. Um, I'm going to try to, well, let's just take this this pin out. Um, per preferably you would take the pins out before you have to wrestle with them. <laughs> but I've been too busy talking and not so busy paying attention to where I'm going next. So there, that pin's out of the way. Um, all right, so I'm still going to keep doing my pebbles. Um, after you finish one, just stitch right on top of it to get to the position where you can start the next one. You don't have to go fast, but I find if you get a little bit of momentum, it does help your circles, your pebbles, have be more round. Okay. So what I've done is I've done a trail of, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 uh, pebbles here on these little dots. Now I've worked my way up to the B. So my intent now on the B is to just do the same outline stitching like we did with Lou. I'm just going to stitch around. I'm going to come inside his antennas, back out again, inside this antenna a little bit, back out. I don't think I'm going to stitch on his body. I'm going to let him be a little poofy. All right. I don't, hopefully you can see that. I'll, I'll, I'll put still pictures on my blog post. So be sure that you go over and reference the blog post for the still pictures so you can see the quilting on Lou and the quilting on the bee. Okay, so as planned now, we're just going to go ahead and echo. It's one great thing that I love about this um, round foot that I use, the rounded uh, darning foot. And it's a closed foot, so it really is got a nice uh, round shape to it. And it, and because it's closed, it doesn't look like a horseshoe like the open toe foot does. Um, it's perfect for helping you echo quilt because you can use the roundness of the foot as your guide, as your measurement for the distance that you want to stay away from your previous stitches to echo those stitches. If you're not familiar with echo quilting, it's basically just using your last stitched line as a guide for placing your next stitched line. So I'm going to actually use the outside of the foot as my guide for how far I want to stay away from the previous set of stitches. If you get, you want to make sure that you come in on these little points and um, accentuate those uh, insides of those circles. Because if you get too muted at this point where you're not doing that, it'll, it'll end up looking like a big blob rather than looking um, like a set, um, like a, like a path, like a, uh, a flying path. So I'm actually coming inside of these uh, little dips that we created with our pebbles or our circles. I refer to them as both. And working my way, I'm not touching it. I'm not coming in and touching the other um, stitch line. I'm just echoing it. I'm, I'm um, oh, lost track of where I am. Um, I'm just going around the outside of it. And it's always beneficial 
to uh, do that a couple of times and give that bee some movement. Now here's a spot when I get in between the wing and the bee itself where I don't really have room to echo it inside twice. So what I'm going to do is just use my same stitch line to work my way back out and then pick up the echo when I'm at a point where I can start um, stitching again. And I'll show you a close-up of that on the blog post. So be sure to jump over there for the still pictures. So now I'm just working my way around the B all the way back around to where I started my echo quilting. And I'm not going to tie into anything here. I'm going to go ahead and do another whole round of echo quilting. You don't have to go fast. There's no right or wrong. You can't, you can't mess it. You, you can't do anything wrong here. It doesn't matter how far away you are from the previous one. If you get a little wonky, you get a little way outside of your line, eh, it doesn't matter. It's still going to look beautiful when you're done. If you don't follow the path exactly right, you can't see where you're going, just keep going. It's fun. It's, it's going to be so pretty when we're done. So you can see the kind of shape that that's taken and you can make your own call as to how many times you want to echo to give the bee movement. But I think this is looking beautiful. I think we might go around once we get back to our starting spot one more time. And I'll show you when we get around something to consider when we get back to the top up there, okay? So one more time. Let's go around one more time. Do what looks best to your eye, though. This is what looks best to my eye. It doesn't, um, it may look different to you, and that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Always stop when you're moving your hands. Stop so that you don't end up with wonky stitches. Oh, I think it's looking beautiful. I love the movement that it gives. All right, stop talking and keep stitching. Now let me show you when we get up here. When I get to the top of the antenna up here, I'm going to not have enough room to get between the antenna and lose um, face. So I may end up making that echo stitch either picking it up and walking along the outline stitch on loose face or just making it a little more narrow through that area. Don't be afraid to stitch over top of previous stitches. There's nothing wrong with that. But so here I come around and I really can just barely swing this echo stitch. And sometimes you may have to just pick up and stitch on another, um, another path. Okay. I think we're back to where we started from. I'm going to come down here and just tuck this echo in to this point here so it looks natural. And what I didn't talk about in the last video was how I stop when I'm done stitching and I want to um, change my needle like I had to the last time. I'm actually just going to, again, take a couple of stitches in place or maybe just tiny little stitches. Like if you had your stitch count, your stitch um, length set down to like 0.5 um, or something like that and taking tiny little stitches and then I can actually know that my stitches will be locked. When I lift my foot up and I lift my needle up, uh, I can pull away and I can actually trim flush. It's one reason I love the Alain um, serrated edge scissors. The point is not real sharp, which is very nice, but it allows you to clip right into an applique, but you can go right flush with them and not worry about cutting your fabric. Don't forget to pick up the bottom and also trim your bobbin thread, otherwise you'll be wasting a lot of bobbin thread. Trim it, um, rough cut it for now. You can always go back through and inspect your back when you're done and trim your bobbin threads flush. So there is our little um, bee all stitched in. Um, I think while we have a minute, let's see, we do have a couple minutes. Let's go ahead and go over and stitch the cloud while we're down in this area and we're using this pretty um, uh, dove color. I think it's Aurafil 2600 in a 50 weight. Uh, let's go over and stitch the cloud. And um, 
what we had talked about in our whiteboard demo was that we were going to stitch around the perimeter of the cloud and I might just do that once or twice. I might stitch out in the blue area and then just another echo stitch inside of that area uh, just to give it a little bit of texture. And um, I'm going to start right in the ditch here, right in the ditch between the black border and um, the cloud, pulling my bobbin thread up and taking a couple of lock stitches in place and putting my needle down and moving these stitches out of the way. I'll come back and trim them later. But I'm going to come around and see where this, um, this color shade is here on this cloud. I'm going to go ahead and accent that. I'm going to let the fabric talk to me and accent that with a little dip. Backtrack my way out. Come here. And then I'm actually probably going to jump all the way over to this spot here because there's really nothing to do between Lou's legs. Now if you had something you needed to pick up and fix here you could do it like you could certainly stitch along Lou's uh, leg right there maybe could use a little accent but let's get started. I'm gonna get started um, whoop, right along the outside of the balloon come in on that little uh, accent piece that was there back out again go up right up to Lou's leg and now here's where I'm going to take a couple of lock stitches in place, my needle up, my foot up, and jump all the way across to the next spot where I want to quilt. All right, And be sure when you do that that you take a couple more lock stitches in place because when you trim those threads, you don't want that thread to unravel. Um, and if this was something that was going to get washed, a lot, very regularly, you may want to consider actually uh, tying a knot you know, stopping and starting in the normal fashion where you're actually tying a knot and burying your threads. Um, on a growth chart, we don't have to worry about that too much. So I've gone ahead and locked my threads, and now I'm going to um, kind of look at my fabric again and follow this line kind of came inside. I'm going to go around the outside of this cloud. Sometimes when it looks like I've got too much puffiness going on, I will position my hands and pull the fabric down in a way. So you, the, what you want to try to avoid is a, a pucker. You don't want a pucker if you can avoid it. So use your hands to control that, okay? Working my way right back up to the ditch again. And then I'm gonna um, go, come back around and I think I'm gonna, do a short echo here to really accent that and it again it doesn't matter um, how exact you are here just give it another little silver lining I guess is a way to look at it another little silver lining on this cloud you're gonna stop take a couple of lock stitches needle up foot up and that'll open up your tension discs so that you can move your um, quilt top back down a couple of stitches in place keep going on that silver lining all right move my threads out of the way now what we talked about in our whiteboard demo was that we're going to come back inside of here now and maybe just do like a, a one inch um, echo inside of here and something to consider is that there's not much going on over here on this right edge so you may be a part of that echo you might want to just kind of build in your own cloud all right but I think what we don't want to do is knock it down too much so at this point that you, you got to look at it and say well where where can I start so I think I'm going to uh, lift my foot and kind of move just down here a little bit back in the ditch Sometimes I'll use my hand wheel to put the needle so that I'm sure it's actually right down in the ditch. A couple of lock stitches, and I think I'm just going to come out and do maybe some um, look-alike clouds to, to work my way down here uh, to be able to do that one inch echo that we were talking about. So we're just going to wing it. We're having fun with this, right? Um, we're just going to make some kind of fox clouds and then we're coming around here Ooh. and 
we're just kind of giving this cloud some texture. I'm going to take a couple stitches in place and be done with that. Trim my top flush, come back and trim my bobbin so that I don't run out by pulling it, and then pull that out. So there's our little cloud. Now these pin marks, don't worry about these pin marks too much. We can come back through with a wet Q-tip q-tip with a little bit of water on it and just dot those a little bit and it'll fill those holes and make those holes go right away so there we have a cloud you see these places where we jumped we're going to come in here again with our um, nice little scissors and we're going to trim these uh, flush apologize for my hand being in the way and you're going to flip this around on the back and do the same thing on the back so there we go we have glue and a cloud and the bumblebee all stitched for now. So this is great progress. Um, this is going to be our lesson for today. Uh, I will try to get another uh, lesson out to you before too long, but if you want you can go ahead and stitch these other clouds that are out here. I'm going to do a very similar to what we did. Um, I'm going to stitch around them probably once or twice and then do some echo stitching inside of them, some big chunky stitching. But you've got a lot of clouds. You can stitch on your own if you want to while we're waiting for the next lesson to come out. And, and that lesson is going to be covering the balloons. Um, and then we'll talk about the background fill. And then we'll finally get to talking about the sashing. So please let me know if this is helpful. If you can't see, if you have feedback about the video, I would love to hear it. Uh, it's kind of a learning adventure for me to do these videos um, this way. So thanks so much. I'm so glad we finally got to stitch. Be sure to check the blog for still pictures and some other tips. And if you're watching the video from a, uh, a mobile device, I'm finding that the annotations aren't showing up in the notes that I'm putting out there. So please do consider watching the videos from a computer or a device that'll show you the title bar, the notion, the, the annotations, and the notes that I put on there. Because sometimes those come in really, really handy uh, to be able to, um, something that I forgot to say while I was recording, I can actually put in there in a note. All right, that's it, signing off. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoy doing this, uh, doing your quilting, and I uh, look forward to your feedback. It's Karen from Karen's Quilts, Crows, and Cardinals blog, and Redbird Quilt Co. signing off tonight for our 2016 Redbird Quilt Co. Free Motion Quilt Along. Have a great one.